Hey guys, it's Garvin's Garage and today we're cleaning and rebuilding the carburetor on this 2003 CR250 and it, our symptoms are at higher at the higher RPM range, it sputters and it doesn't want to go any higher RPMs than it really should be going. So we bought a rebuild kit for around $20 on eBay and we're going to put it in and see if that fixes the issue. The first thing you want to do is remove your subframe by first removing your seat with the two 10 millimeter bolts on both sides of the, so the seat. And I recommend cleaning the dirt bike before you start messing around with the carburetor because you don't want dirt getting into your engine. So then now you can just remove your seat. Then you want to remove your lower subframe bolts. In this one, this has a kickstand. So just watch out because there's a lot of tension on this. So I actually set the dirt bike upright. And then put this up in the upright position so there's less tension on it. So then you can fully remove it. Fully remove it and then just set that to the side. Then you want to remove the intake boot screw that goes to the carburetor because that actually comes off with the whole subframe and once it's loose there's a lever there's like a thing right here that you want to grab when you remove the subframe next you want to remove your gas tank holder thing down there and then um and then you want to remove your upper subframe bolt and make sure to hold it because this is the only thing that's left holding on your subframe. Now I'm going to remove the upper shock bolt so we can access the carburetor easier. And just make sure not to get any dust in the carburetor because it's right there. Now you want to remove the front carburetor clamp that goes to the engine and then pull out these lines right here and watch out they're usually pretty fragile when they're like 15 years old like these are and there's ones in back also which are the overflow tubes and this one actually has a zip tie on it so that makes it a little easier keeping them together. And then you can just simply pull the carb off. Like that. And then you also have to disconnect the fuel line. And if your fuel is off, it should just only drain out just a little bit. Like that. And then we're going to get to removing these screws too. Remove the throttle cable. Now I'm going to unscrew these Phillips head screws on the top of the carburetor slide. And there's a spring in there, so just watch out because it could fly out. And then just Pull this out slowly, 
And be careful because it's attached to the needle also, so you don't want to damage that. Just like that, and you can just let that dangle. And then now pull out your carburetor. Out the back. Like that, and then... And then I have your carburetor. To remove the throttle cable, you want to slide this spring up all the way up as high as possible. And then grip onto the cable as high as possible right here. And then push down into that hole. And then push down and then slide it to the right right there and then um like right there and then you wanna lift up and then it should come right out and then you can slide this off now for the first thing you want to do is remove all of the hoses so just they all have clamps on it so just get a pliers on them and try to pull them back a little They might just pull off like that one did. Once you have those hoses removed, you want to remove this choke actuator thing. And that's just a 14 millimeter bolt. And then you can unscrew it. And the whole thing actually just comes off. All in one piece. And there's a spring in there, so... Watch out when you get down to that part. Okay, there's that, and then we're gonna re get to removing the bowl. Now you want to remove this Phillips head screw to remove the bowl. And there's your bowl, and then now we're going to get to removing all the jets. Now you want to remove this jet right here, but unscrew it with a 6mm. And want to be careful because these are super small, so don't want to lose them. Now what you want to do is remove this, which is an 8mm. And then now you can remove this slosh prevention piece of plastic. Now what you want to do is remove your pilot jet. And now you can remove your um, float and it, it's just the screw right here that's holding the rod in and preventing it from coming out And then just lift this out with the needle attached to it right there. And then just set that down somewhere. And then now we can remove this needle seat. Just unscrew this Phillips head right here. And then once you have this screw, you want to be cautious about how you remove this. Sometimes you need to use a needle on those pliers, but you don't want to damage where the seat sits. But we're removing, we're replacing that anyway, so. I'm going to 
grab this very cautiously and just pull it out of its spot. Just like that. Now I'm going to remove the idle screw, which is an 8mm bolt right there. And then you can just back that off a little. And then unscrew both of them at the same time because you want to make sure you have the idle the same. Now you want to unscrew the air fuel screw, but what you first want to do is check what it's originally at. So right now we're at zero. Half. One. One and a half, and that's where it should be. Let's check how far he unscrewed. Oh, he just unscrewed it just a little bit. So now you just want to back it out fully. And then you want to grab that spring there also. It's kind of hard to grab, but yeah, just grab that spring out. Okay, now what you want to do is remove these slide things for the carburetor slide. And they're works this isn't really required but we're just gonna do it just to make sure the whole carburetor is clean now what you want to do is unscrew this needle bolt thing that's inside this slide so you can remove the um needle And I just pull this thing out, which, like I said before, what you want to do is slide the throttle cable down and then pull it out of that slot right there so then it can actually come out the side. It's kind of a difficult task, but it can be done. And then this needle can just slide right up. And then you want to make sure you keep it at the same position, which is... One, two, three. It's at the fourth from the bottom and second from the top. And you just want to keep that in mind for for when you put it all back together. Now, once we have everything taken apart, we're going to just put it in the ultrasonic cleaner to make sure it just cleans all the majority of the stuff off. And what we use is 50% simple green and 50% water just to dilute it a little so you don't have to use so much of this. And we go around like 480 seconds, I think it is. And we heat it, like preheat it about 10 minutes before we throw everything in, just so it gets quick, even cleaner. What you first want to start out with is putting your choke actuator back in. But before you put it back in, you want to put a little um, graphite lubricant in the little like clip area to hold the choke up in the upright position before you put it all back together. Just in the little clip thing and you just want to move it up and down. And just get it in there good. And then flip it over and do it the same to the other side. Just like that. And then once you have it worked into the like um, actuator, you want to snap this rubber um, protectant piece back on so no dirt and debris can get past it. It's kind of a tough thing to do, but once you get it over the lip, it should be good.
you know, you want to lubricate the spring a little and down where it goes into the shaft a little with two stroke oil because this will eventually get mixed in with fuel possibly so you don't want graphite to be in there and then just move that up and down a little and then once you have that in you can thread it back into the slot where it came from and also you can put a new o-ring on there and then tighten it down and if you have a new gasket or just even the old gasket you just want to put a little lubricant on it so you don't damage the gasket when you put it all back together and then when you're tightening it if you put a new gasket on you want to tighten it a little more than before just because you got to push down the gasket and compress it because the previous one was already compressed pretty far and then you have your choke piece in now I'm going to put in the um, slide, carburetor slide holders, and you got to remember to put the lip towards the engine on the carburetor, and then what you got to do is just hold them in place while you grab your screws, and they just slip down all the way and just thread in, there's no special adjustment that they need, and then torque them down with the works wrench and then for the other side same thing and then just snug those up with the Okay, so now what you want to do is put in your pilot jet. So you just drop it in behind the main jet. And then you just hand it in. And then, since it's brass, you don't need to tighten it much. And this is a 30, and the stock is 30. Um, and the main jet just nice and snug and then the main jets uh 420 so for this you just want to drop it right in the middle and this is what the main jet threads into just hand thread it in all as far as you can and then just snug it down and it's a uh, eight millimeter nice and snug there and then we'll put the main jet on and like I said earlier it's a stock which is 420 okay so what you want to do now is get this oil this ring a little get a little bit of oil on it and then just rub it around it and then on the needle seat, you just want to push it all around it, see so you now it's on. And then what you're going to want to do is get a little bit more oil on it, just a little, not too much. And then before it swells up, drop it in. Like, oh, like this. Okay, now you put this screw in to hold the needle seat in. You don't have to go tight, it just holds the seat down. Just nice and snug, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now, to put the float on, you grab this pin, slide it in, and set it so it's sticking out a little bit more on this side than this side. And then you grab your needle, and then you want to slide it on. And 
and then drop it in and then you want to make sure it's lined up and then you want to screw it in And then you just tighten the screw down just to hold the pin down. Doesn't have to be too tight. And then we'll get to setting the float height. Okay, so now for the float bowl, we so once we had it on, we would tip it down and then we'd here I'll show you guys. We'd tip it we'd slowly angle it until it just there's a little plunger on the needle the float needle and what you want to do is just right as it just rests up against it you want to like hold it there and you want to make sure the float is level with the with the seating surface for the float pole and it, as you can see it's level right there and that's where you want it to be so what you since ours was a little high you had to bend the, this tab up a little bit to drop this drop the float height but if it was low you'd want to push it down so it lifted and you want it to be level and then um now we have to put our splash guard on which just goes just like this so that little tab pushes down on this metal piece so you just slide it over and then give it a nice firm push and then you can hear it snap in and then now for this we're gonna put some oil around the ring and I'll, I'll spread it out in a little bit. And make sure it's pushed down all the way. And then we'll put it on so it goes just like this. Just nice straight down. Push it nice down. It'll it'll fall onto a little stud that holds it in place. And then you wanna drop that screw in and then tighten it. That's the only screw like screw and then there's this which is the drain for the bowl, and then we'll put some oil around the o-ring on this. And then we'll spread it all out. It's kinda hard to get your finger in there. There we go. And then just make sure it's straight on, it threads right onto the center post where the main jet is. And we'll tighten down right after this. Okay, now for the reinstallation of the air fuel mixture screw. You want to just slide the spring on. And then you want to lubricate the tip and also lubricate inside this hole on the, this side. And then you want to just set it in there. Get it all the way in. And then you just tighten it. We're going to tighten it all the way in. And then back it out one and a half. So that right there is all the way in, and then half one one and a half. Perfect. Okay, so now if we're putting the idle adjustment screw in, it, I just dropped a little bit of oil in there and a little bit of oil on the tip of this, so now I'm just going to slide it in and just hand thread it in as far as I can. And then we just set the idle to roughly where it was before we took this apart and put it back together. And then, since it's just a lock, a lock nut that holds this in, 
it's a eight millimeter, so we'll just tighten down the eight millimeter. Okay, now for putting the needle clip on for the factory position, it's second from the top. So this is the top, and it's the second one. So not the first, but the second. So now it's pretty hard to put this on. Just got to be careful. You're going to put it on a flat, hard surface and just push down and pop it in. That worked perfect. Make sure it's free. And then what you want to do is grab your slide. Find where it goes. Drop it nice and easy. And then what you want to do is grab this. Put a little lubrication on there. And then spread it out a little bit. And then drop it down. And then you want to take your 6mm and just lightly thread it in so you don't cross thread it or anything. There we go. And then just tighten it, just like pretty much the same tightness as you did on everything else, not too tight. And then we'll get to putting it back in. What I like to do before putting on the overflow lines is just put a little oil on the tips of them so they slide on easier if you're going to reuse the fuel line because they can get pretty hard to put back on if they've been like, um, if they're pretty old. And this one is pretty hard. You just want to slide it on all the way. And then grab your clip. Which is, you might need a needle in those pliers sometimes to get them back on. Now what you want to do is once you have the carburetor um, ventilation lines all back on, you want to put it back on the dirt bike and it, you just want to put a little oil on the, where it mounts to the, where it clamps to the dirt bike and just, just don't use too much because it's not really needed that much. Just want to make it slip on a little easier and just get a light film on it. And then you can slip it back into the intake boot. And there's actually a slot meant for it, so you want to get it into that slot correctly. There, just like that. And then you want to tighten down the screw. That's sitting right there. You don't want it to be too tight, but make sure it's tight enough so no leaks, so there's no leaks, so you don't um, mess up your tuning and get an air leak in the system. And that's tight, and then we'll get to putting on the throttle cable. Okay, now what you want to do is slide on your carburetor slide cover and then slip on the spring and then grab your slide and then you want to push this spring up as far as possible, which is kind of a pain to do sometimes. And then grab onto the throttle cable. And then just pull that spring down as far as possible. 
and then like we did earlier, just line that up in there. But I'm gonna need some more slack. And then now once you have the throttle cable connected to the slide, you just wanna put it into your carburetor and make sure that it the um, needle slides into the jet and so you don't damage the needle and then once you have that all lined up you can get it lined up on the on the carburetor and just make sure that your gasket is still intact and in the correct spot and then thread in the screws and then use a Phillips head to Phillips head screwdriver to tighten them down. Now what you want to do is put on your fuel line back to where it was, and then slip on the clamp back to where it was also. And once you have that back back on, put your vent lines back to where they came from, and then on the back right here. And then now we can get to putting on the subframe. Now we're going to put on the subframe because we put the shock bolt back on. And when putting this on, you just want to make sure that you um, line up the exhaust and the intake at the exact same time. So get the intake boot in position and then make sure the exhaust is on. It's probably easiest to do this with two people, but it can do it it'll work with only one. And then um slide the intake boot over the carburetor with the tab to help you. Okay, and then just clamp down the clamp and put the bolts on. 